Hey there, boils and ghouls. Welcome to another episode of Hollow Weekly, where only smart horror survives. This week, we are jumping. We're doing a little differently this time. We're jumping. We're doing Hollow Can We Go? And uh, we ended off last at 23, 24%. We're doing a quick... We're, we're spelunking real quick to... <laughs> But the scent. Yes. No. no. No, no, no. Sorry, you said spoiler. I so. wish. Uh, to 16% to review The Gallows. <laughs> Straight from the trailer, you just Straight that from the trailer. Actually, that was better than the whole movie. <laughs> but before we jump into The Gallows, if you're not following us on Spotify or subscribe to us on iTunes, head on over there, hit the green button, hit subscribe, give us a five-star rating, and we will love you more than we love The Gallows. Oof. Far more. Far more. 16% The Gallows. Now, this film has been teasing me. I, when I saw the trailer in the theaters, I loved the trailer. The trailer was terrifying. Yes. And that doesn't happen a whole lot. And I'm going right. to try to avoid saying the trailer, the trailer, the trailer. <laughs> over over no, but it was great. The way it was shot, it was it was that scene. Uh, it was all red. It kind of reminded me of like the promotional stuff for the Evil Dead remake. Mm-hmm. Like it was it was it was such a cool vibe. And uh, I remember, I thought I remember the film getting pushed back or something like that. But anyways, when it came out, it just got completely destroyed. And I so I avoided. It. I'm like, all right, I'm not going to see it. But then since it's been out. Uh, on video and on demand Mm -hmm. i'm sort of like "Ah, come on let's give it a shot let's give it a shot and luckily it was on hello can we go so i'm like all right we can check that mark yep we can check that mark there uh quick synopsis Mm -hmm. all right so for those who don't know what the gallows is for those who haven't seen it or were so traumatized by seeing it that they blocked it and you need to remember again here's what happened here's what happened in 1993 a freak accident involving a noose kills Teenager Charlie Grim Grimley Grim Grimley Grimley. <laughs> Come on, man, <laughs> Grimley. No, it's Grimmel. Grimmel. All right. Uh, during a high school production of The Gallows, twenty years later, on the eve of the play's revival, students uh, Reese, played by Reese uh, Pfeiffer, played by Pfeiffer <laughs> Ryan, played by Ryan. Stop. <laughs> and Cassie, I'm assuming, played by Cassie, <laughs> since they all went by their actual names uh, in the film. Yes. Uh, become trapped in the auditorium. <laughs> Uh, uh, with no way of calling for help. Uh, a night of terror awaits for the four friends as they face the wrath of a malevolent, malevolent and vengeful spirit. It seems Charlie will... I hate this, I hate this line. It <laughs> seems as Charlie will have his final curtain call after all. <laughs> they don't get trapped in the auditorium. They get trapped in the whole school, right? Right. So that, that, that little synopsis, Google, that's false. Yeah. Well, I mean, so... I, there's a trend that this movie could be setting that I like. The actors play with their own names. That should just happen in everything. Ash is Bruce. Ripley is No, no, Sigourney. Ash has to say Ash. I mean, maybe going forward, like, <laughs> okay. like Wrinkle of Time, it should have been just Oprah. They should just be like, hey, here's Oprah. That would Oprah been- and the, I think the actress's name in that is Storm. So Storm. <laughs> Stormy? Which is such a cool, oh, which is a cool <laughs> fucking name. It is a cool name. I wish I was named Storm. I'm not cool enough to be called Storm. <laughs> <laughs> nor am i but yeah I, but yeah i mean this movie's cutting edge it's let's let's dive into this cutting oh edge my piece God. of cinema so let's start off with 60 second reviews sure all right do you want to do you want to kick start um i don't have a you go i'll think of <laughs> I, I don't we're not joking the film is this weird <laughs> the film is this weird okay i'll go you i'm go. gonna start the clock right now yes. so my review for the gallows it's a $100,000 uh, film, I knew that going into it because I the, one of the main reasons I wanted to see it was seeing how low of a budget it was, and it made like twenty two million dollars in the in the theater. And I was like, well, if it made that much on such a low budget, it has to be it has to be one of those charming low budget films, right? Because there's a lot of them that that uh, aren't good but are enjoyable. Mm-hmm. This is not it, <laughs> unfortunately. And and, and I, you know, I'm, I'm always a glass half full kind of guy. We're gonna do the segment best and worst part. There are a handful of things that this film does very well, like the scene uh, that they use in the trailer that is in the film. That is perfect. No uh, accident that was in the trailer. No yeah. accident. Yeah, they knew that was the best part. Uh, th- there's a handful of things in the film that I think are good cinematography wise. 
Uh, but but writing and editing wise, uh, I don't think they're they're that great. And uh, I got a few seconds left to spare. Kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Good review. <laughs> Spoiler. Spoiler. That's how the, uh, the movie ends. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right. Ready. Sixty second review. Right. And you're on. All right. I don't give a rat's ass about this movie. It was, I I couldn't care less. I couldn't come up with a ten second review of it except for. That, so it's not here's the, the the cool thing is I think there are some interesting things that this movie can lead to in conversation. Yes. Right. So I'm I'm intrigued by the fact that it made so much money. Mm-hmm. And I'm intrigued by the fact of where it went wrong, considering that Blumhouse was involved. Yes. And I'm intrigued by the fact that movies that really, really get gritty on low budgets can be scary even when they're not good. Mm-hmm. Is that's, that that's, that's it? it? That's forty second review. <laughs> that was good. So so the next the next then. episode you'll have a you'll have <laughs> twenty a, seconds to spare. They yes, roll over. You'll have an eighty second. <laughs> these ro- these seconds do roll over. Wait, then I want to re-record this because I want four <laughs> seconds review on this movie. I want to save all my time. I want to bank my time for the no. Okay. Okay. So that's our that's our that's our quick review. Uh, oh, let me pull up my notes from from my phone because there, like I said, yeah. there there was some some things about the film that that we did enjoy. Like, was the film overall dog shit? Yes. Yes. Overall, yes. But I think as a horror fan, this is one of those films that like, if blockbusters were still open. <laughs> yeah, me and my friend. It's a Friday night. We're out of school. We go to rent a movie. If we had picked this one up, no, because we used to normally pick films that look bad. And if we had picked this, I feel like that would have been worth the rental. Like we would have gotten the bad horror film we totally. expected. Yes. Um, I it, it it is it is fun bad in parts. Yes. So the beginning when the when Charlie and for, because of that episode we did with Alex Taylor on Halloween. Two mm-hmm. or is it three? I don't know. Halloween two it has to be two. Uh, where uh, uh, Loomis is like Charlie, Charlie. <laughs> I always think of his name like that. Um, no, but the intro of the film was actually pretty good. Like when mm-hmm. they show the play and the kid dies, like that part was actually cool. Yeah. This the film's biggest issue from from the get is that this film thinks its audience is stupid. Because they expl- they say everything to the audience. They're like, "Hey, do you understand? Like, hey, yes. why- hey, why are you recording this? Well, we want to get it for the kids. Oh, this is a great this is uh, a great production considering that thing that happened last <laughs> minute." <laughs> and like, it was just they were just telling you everything. I, let me let me counter argue a little bit to give credit where I mean I belong. Um, I read uh, interviews with the two filmmakers who made this. Mm-hmm. And the the thing they kept repeating over and over again was that they had no money. Yes. And it was really on their mind that they had no money, mm-hmm. right? And the other thing that was weird that they kept emphasizing over and over again is that they were really excited that it was originally a PG-13 movie. They were looking to make a wholesome movie. They call themselves wholesome guys. Mm-hmm. They're like, we don't like blood. We don't like gore. So, I mean, they literally said it multiple times in mm-hmm. the two interviews that I checked out, right? So, first of all, they're kind of a weird pedigree for making a horror movie in the first place. And they said the reason they made a horror movie was because you can make a horror movie cheap and have an in in Hollywood. Like, I don't think these are horror lovers, right? I think these are people who had no money, were trying to make a product, mm-hmm. and th- this made sense to them, and then they made it. So, I don't know if it... There's there's three possibilities here. They think the audience is dumb. Mm-hmm. Two is they're dumb. <laughs> or three is that they were using that to that technique to save money for to tell you the things that they weren't going to show you because they just perpetually felt like they were out of money. Well, the things that they were saying were things that were already happening on the screen. <laughs> so it was just bad writing. So like well, like just... like they had the line they had the line I wrote it down here. <laughs> The parents, they look at the, the 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 stage, and one of the parents says, "Great job on the gallows," <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, we see it, we we see it, we know there's a gallows right there on the stage because we fucking see it." <laughs> can can I explain why that happened to you? I happen to know the answer to that one. So here's the answer to that one. <laughs> Do you know what the name of the company they founded to make this movie is? It better be, it better be something like 
we're talk is it is it called we talk directly at you? <laughs> we talk directly at you pictures? Pictures, yeah. Is that what <laughs> no, it is? No, that's not what it is. You gotta take two words and smash them together. And then and then that. Ass bean. <laughs> Aspen Studios, Aspen <laughs> Pictures, close. So the company that brought us this masterpiece is called Tremendum. Wow, which is a combination of tremendous and dumb, apparently. So if you're gonna name, if you're gonna name your fledgling studio Tremendum Pictures, then you're also the kind of the person who's gonna be like. <laughs> show people the gallows and then tell them, hey, what a great job we did on the gallows. I mean, spoiler for this fucking movie, the end of it has the main villainess take a bow. Like, the movie bows to you at the end. If any movie has ever less earned the the, the shot of its main character turning to us, the audience, and taking an elaborate bow, it's this fucking movie. This You're film- not allowed to take a bow. Funny enough, this film is about a Where's high school. Where's that thing from the Apollo, the hook? Like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> like, it's clear the stage time, not bow time, but go ahead. Just like the old school cane yanking them off. <laughs> it's funny, because this film is about a high school play, and it feels like a high school play. It, it does. It like, really it does. legit feels like a high school play. The Some of the other uh, notes... But but before you... So, before you jump... The, the premise itself is cool. Yes. And I could see why people at the time got excited about this movie coming out. If I had only known of the trailer and kind of what they were leaking out about the movie at the time that it was coming out, I would have been stoked to see it too. Yeah, and that, my reaction with the first trailer was, "This is going to be a mm-hmm. good horror film." Yeah. So I, I, and I'm always, I always stress, I'm glad I don't because I don't like to shit on things just to shit on them. <laughs> but like, I wanted this to be good. I was, I was, I was. You wanted this to be tremendum. I went. Oh, I thought, I thought <laughs> this is going to be the most tremendum film of whatever year it came out. <laughs> no, but the weird thing was, I never understood why they had this. Like, there was apparently just a huge boner to put on this play again. Like, right. I wonder, like, if like he died in '93, if in '94 they're like, should we try it? Should we try it again? <laughs> no, no, you need a 95? span of time. You know, no. You, you, so what happens is you do this tragic play with a tragic outcome, and then the next year you're like, wow, that was a mistake. We're doing Greece, and then <laughs> and then you do. Like loose. Yeah, yeah, you do, right. And Oklahoma, whatever. Yeah. And then it gets darker, you know, uh, 10 years go by, and now you find yourself doing The Crucible, and then 15 Sweeney years go Todd. by, and now you're doing Macbeth. And then on the when 20 years have passed, you turn around, and you go, what was that fucking play that killed that? We're doing that. That's the one we needed, though. That's the cycle. What was it called? Neckbreaker? <laughs> no, but I... I and then, Oh, and the people talking to the camera, they did that a lot. The, they got they high school... High, like, when you do high school, like... Uh, something like Scream. Yes. Like I, I felt like they did the classroom and the students, uh, fantastic. Like I thought it, I thought it felt great. Even the Scream MTV series, um, mm-hmm. does it? And even um, not was it Unfriended? What was the Skype film? I always forget the uh, name. Unfriended. Unfriended. Yep. Th- that they got teenagers. Uh, it felt it felt good. Like it felt right. Yes. This film did high. school. It felt like two older dudes wrote high school it did it totally did although i gotta say i really did like the setting i was okay with the school i mean it was really dark and really bare really stripped down it was not like we were getting any like beautiful silent hill backgrounds or anything but for what it was i thought it was pretty effective and it felt like everyone's high school yes like you could you could be plopped in there and you knew how to run away and get out yes um so no, the setting of the high school was 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 perfect. I, yep. I thought they did that right. It was just it was just the interaction of like, hey, I play football, and it was like the weakest looking football players <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Just yeah, bashing but that, no, 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 that doesn't matter. Let me explain that to you. So this this movie set, I think it's set in the town of Beatrice. Okay, so you didn't catch this, but the people in Beatrice have like amazing uh, growth powers. They're almost superheroes, right? So uh, uh, by way of example, Charlie, we see him in the picture, and he's like four foot nothing and weighs like 80 pounds and then when charlie the villain shows up again he's michael myers from rob zombies halloween times two so he's like 10 yeah. feet tall he weighs 800 pounds i mean so these people can change their phys- that when they go to play football is what i'm telling you they swell up they, they like bane in the in, <laughs> was it batman forever batman and robin 
<laughs> they just like press a little <laughs> they button. Just, yeah, exactly. They just inflate. Yeah, don't worry about it. That part's that part's solid. But no, they just made such a deal of the fact that like <laughs> you play football. If coach sees you on the stage, <laughs> like trying to do something different, he's gonna be mad. I'm impressed that you could tell any of these fucking people apart from each other. I couldn't tell anyone apart from anyone else in this movie except for, um, except for Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer, I got. She's the one who's the head of the play. She's the theater, theater girl. Yeah, she's the theater girl. Spoiler. The, <laughs> da- some, the somehow daughter. Yes, yes, yes. Somehow daughter of Charlie and um, the woman who was in the lurking. She was applauding at the it end. It was like her his girlfriend, I think, at the, the time. The girlfriend who didn't show up. Yeah, I don't. Right. Ex- yeah, exactly. This is where we get. So what happened Harry. was, what happened was, <laughs> as if anyone cares, Charlie, um, was supposed to play the hangman mm-hmm. in the original play. And then the guy who was going to play it, he calls in sick for his play performance. <laughs> he has his understudy. <laughs> right, right. So his understudy, Charlie, ends up be- playing the character who gets hanged. Mm-hmm. And then he actually, for real, gets hanged. But the girl, for- Charlie's girlfriend, maybe, becomes I thought, the uh, mom? I Yeah. Right? So it's mom and I don't. It's I don't know what it's mom and the dad who didn't I don't know what the fuck happened. So so okay so we're we're I still we're still you. confused. But uh, let me just let me just run about this math real quick. I'm not a math whiz sure. by any stretch of the imagination. So this happens sure. in '93, right? Right. And Nick is currently doing math and, and, manually. And let's say let's say he was a <laughs> let's say he was a a sophomore yes. or junior. Sure. Let's sure. say he's a junior. How old are you when you're a junior? Like what? 16, 17? Sounds right. And mm-hmm. then twenty years go by. It's like, uh, how old is his daughter? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know if that math works. I don't know. She looked like she was a hundred, but she's probably only what forty. I don't know. I don't know. But then his daughter, like, they must have had her like super young yeah, for her to be in college twenty Dude, this years. This is later. like, this is what this is the same thing that like Texas Chainsaw 3D did to me. Like the timeline is all off. It was weird. doesn't make any sense. It yeah, was I, weird. I don't. I but you know what? There's it's a scene. fine. There's a revenge motif. That's all you need to know. It, but it, there, it, there is, and that's all there is. It's just, it's just like they laid it on on the grill and forgot about it. Right. There's a fucking scene in this film mm-hmm. where there the, is the main. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was all improv. It was all improv. But there's no. Okay. Remember, so after after there's some high school shenanigans, and then we're in like that kid's bedroom, and it's just like filming randomly in his room, and it's solid for like 20 seconds, and he just pops up and goes, "Boo!" Oh yeah, 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 exactly. That he happens. scares the camera. Right. He terrifies the camera. Why? <laughs> to to scare so, us. I don't know. I'm so dumb. Why did Charlie quadruple in my, size? My, my note was boo. <laughs> Fucking strange. <laughs> like, like I could I didn't know how to take that scene. I was like, I don't understand here. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. How did the school, how'd she get in? Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's your actual, Nick's actual notes. Are just I'm looking at my notes. A sequence of Jesus I'm trying to Christ. relive the film through my notes, and I'm like, <laughs> my God. Yeah, and I, one of my notes is this movie strongly believes its audience is dumb <laughs> because it's just, <laughs> one of my notes, holy shit, characters, please. <laughs> um, no, it's just, it, it's just they, 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 they explained everything. So, like, when, yes. they, when, they, when they found out they were trapped in the school, I actually liked that scene when they couldn't open up the door. That mm-hmm. sense of being stuck somewhere. Mm-hmm. They did that. I didn't believe it at all, but I liked it. But I liked it. Yeah, totally. Because 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 one like uh you know you've been out of school past like school hours like for like a meeting or some like school event yeah, or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. It's you super know, creepy. And half the school shut down freaks me the fuck out. Yep. So that was perfect. Um, the one but but there was a scene when once they found out they were locked, they went through like the office to the files to a back room to another room mm-hmm. that happened to just have a TV on a stand that then played the gallows. It was playing the old 1993 play yeah. when the kid got hung. And then they're telling you that this is the play where the kid got hung, even yeah. though we already knew it was the play because we saw it in the beginning and now we're seeing it again. Yeah, but you know, so that is, a, I, I have to disagree. That was one of my favorite moments of the whole fucking movie because as dumb as it was, it, I literally, I exclaimed out loud watching it. I was, we're, it was found footage in found footage. That was true. We were Inception. watching a found footage movie. You know, it was found, it was horror movie Inception. It was... Blowing my mind that we were watching a movie in a movie in a movie. Like I just wanted to keep doing that and just 
give eventually, up on the eventually plot. they find another screen of them watching that screen, <laughs> and then it shows a live footage of us watching them, watching us watching them, watching paranormal and activity in the infinity. theater. Yeah, it would have been amazing. Absolutely, it is just, it's just, it's. Can it's, we can we take a sideways? Do you want to do icons now or later? Where would you have this? Placed? I'm almost. Let me just finish this. I only got a few more left. Okay. It was because it, I wanted I wanted to explain to you. Let me just explain real quick. This is my my only note here. This was actually pulled from one of these interviews. I just wanted to explain the design of Charlie. Okay. Oh my. God. So Charlie's look. Close your eyes. You're at a spirit Halloween. So, <laughs> right. But no. I, this explains everything. Watch this. So one of the filmmakers says, and I quote. We had a costume designer helping us out early on when we shot our original teaser experiment trailer. Mm. I was looking online at what do executioners typically look like. We wanted something along those lines, but unique as well, and something cheap because we had no money. We were like, let's throw a sack on his head. (laughs) I'm still quoting. But the costume designer was like, yeah, I don't think that's enough, and added stitching and a detail or two. That was the look we ended up with. The other, other film- what other icon wore potato sack <laughs> wait, for one wait, film? Wait. The other filmmaker says, and I quote, "We definitely wanted something unique and different. I mean, that's the challenge. It's all been done before, so the challenge was to make it new and unique. We had early sketches, and then our costume designer helped us tie in the ultimate look and the news. We hadn't known of that to have been done. Again, we're wholesome guys and not into gore and that kind of stuff. So we thought about rope." <laughs> There's, you know what's funny? So this is what I'm telling you is the way the whole way this movie was made was they were like, we need something here. What would be cool and unique and different? What like literally they're saying to themselves like, what would John Carpenter do, but without putting thought into it and no money? <laughs> There's just something inherently creepy about calling yourself a wholesome guy. <laughs> like that's like them talking about this is almost scarier than the film. <laughs> They're like, hey, you're you're locked in an auditorium with fucking Charlie, or you have to sit and listen to these guys talk about how they're wholesome guys, which is scarier. I'm gonna go Maybe with, that should be on the TV in the movie. That like, should be them, you, just yeah. like, hey, we're just wholesome guys. Like, I feel like those guys have clammy hands while they tell you they're good guys. Yeah, I, don't, I don't like it. Yeah, and I don't want to bash on the guys. I mean, they made $30 million off this movie, so that's, they, more they, than it, I that's genius. Yeah. I, like, it's totally fine. But my point is that I feel like that everything that happened in this movie was basically the, the three-step process of, oh, shit, we're making a horror movie. Well, we need something here. Uh, we have no money, and we don't want to think too hard about it. Here, how about this? <laughs> for, for 90 minutes. <laughs> and for 45 of those minutes, the first death doesn't come until 45 minutes. Not that like there's like a horror movie quota where it's like right, right, right. every 10 minutes, but right. it was just... It well, just, it was it, astounding how far this movie made into it before anything actually happened. Yeah, that was the biggest part because like me and you were... We both like we paused it like once or twice to see how far we were to the film. Going, has it been twenty minutes? Right, because nobody had died. So my the horror fan, my body horror clock mm-hmm. was telling me that I couldn't be more than twenty minutes of the movie because no one had died yet. So I literally it was turned to you and I'm like, can you pause it? How far away? It was like fifty five minutes. Yeah, I'm we like, were like, yo, I'm like, wait a minute, how are we at fifty minutes of this no. movie? No. All right. Well, before we get to the second, one, the, yes. the last thing I just want to say is there was a scene well, to end on a positive note. Yes. When on, on the very end, when they find their friends uh, hung. Yes. Uh, while they're running, I thought that part was shot really well and was very creepy. And that scene. Uh, if you have to watch any scene, watch that scene. Yeah, that scene is is really good. I agree. I think it was really scary and effective. If you get past the ridiculousness of all the shit, like why Charlie's even there and why there's people doing standing ovations in the back or whatever, but <laughs> visually and the sound, like all the and I actually, although I thought it was dumb at the time, because and we should talk about we'll talk about this the play part of this in a little bit because they're talking in in thou dost and wouldst thou in those that mm-hmm. language right so she so he voluntarily for no fucking apparent reason reese gets up and puts his head in the news and then i i don't care i saw online i saw people try to explain it don't try to explain it there's no explanation he just spontaneously decides to stick his head in the news knowing how that's going to end for no no fucking reason at all except for that had to happen but so he sticks his head in the noose and then he's turning to her and keeps saying, Pfeiffer, run, Pfeiffer, get out. I'm doing this for you. Get out of here. Like whatever. And she keeps going, no, Augustus, don't leave me or whatever his character name is. And the play is, and it got creepy because she, he kept saying no Pfeiffer, 
oh my god Pfeiffer. like Pfeiffer. it's, it's p f e i i'm not i don't want to make fun of people with his name but like this movie was already bad enough without they kept doing Pfeiffer, and i kept like adding p's in my head to <laughs> fucking but fucking everything in this movie so but he she keeps going no augustus thou shalt should not do this and it was that was creepy yeah because she was staying hardcore in character Mm -hmm. and there's something creepy about like the realization that you're doing this because you're in love with this girl and then realizing after you've put in a head in the news and your hands tied back that she's crazy af yes (laughs) right and you're doing it for nothing right like because you see it dawn on him that she's nuts Mm -hmm. and maybe he miscalculated that this was the love of his life. (laughs) And that was kind of a creepy cool moment. I I did like, I even liked the, after he hangs just, you know, because we're so bombarded with sound effects and music and emotionally manipulative, manipulative, manipulative music in movies. I was, I liked that it was so stark. There was no music, Mm -hmm. just the sound of like that creaking rope sound. Yeah. Which was cool. That was good. Okay. Uh, best part would be, uh, like I said, the kids getting, uh, hung. I thought that part, I thought that part was genuinely creepy. I thought the makeups, uh, looked good. Uh, what'd you think of the, the chase scene in the middle where Charlie catches one of them with the noose and they get pulled, you know, out of screen, like happens on every horror movie now. Yeah. So there was two, there was two scenes that I liked where Charlie did something. (laughs) Um, the, the, the first one was when they kill the douche. Yes. Um, that scene was 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 pretty good, and I liked how we locked the door. The kids can't get in. You hear him screaming. Yes. And I even like how they cut back in time for you to see it from that character's camera. That was cool. That part was cool. Um, and then the other part that sort of reminded me of Paranormal Three, I think, um, was when uh, the girl got uh, uh, pulled up by her neck. Yes. Uh, Random. It kind of reminds me of in Paranormal when the little girl gets pulled by her hair. Uh, that scene, that that kind of shit always. Yeah, because like I don't even think you're allowed to do horror movies anymore without what I think of as horror movie levitation. So there's two mm-hmm. horror movie levitation moves. One is the villain picks you up by the neck with one hand, and then the camera cuts to your feet not on the ground. Yeah, right. Or you float paranormal activity out of your bed when you don't know what's happening, or you get mm-hmm. caught up like like a force, right? Yeah, and I feel like this movie sort of did that. Mm-hmm. a little bit yeah and and, that, and those parts were good because you actually it gave you a reason to be scared of charlie it gave you a reason to be scared of some theater nerd actually yes but the the best shot of the whole movie was that shot where you saw the person get pulled up into the blackness in the roof yeah that was good yeah okay. I, I really like that uh worst part is actual everything else <laughs> the okay. worst the worst part is any time no that was just but to be serious though the worst part is when whenever they tell you what's happening on screen yes it's just like if they had if they had cut out half of that dialogue yeah. i think this film probably would have been a lot better just because it wouldn't feel so, uh, the dialogue wouldn't have felt so ham-fisted agreed totally agree all right so that's my best worst best worst um the best part of this movie is the cover version of smells like teen spirit in the credits in the trailer which is the, one huh? of the best one of the best cover versions of that song I've ever heard. And the worst part of this movie is I don't even remember that. That it did nothing groundbreaking at all. I now I know two two wild, crazy, and wholesome guys aren't gonna make a groundbreaking <laughs> horror movie. I crazy and wholesome. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got I got that these people were never gonna bring us that. But and by the way, I'm gonna put in I'm gonna put in runner up best thing is i actually think the cast is pretty good believe it or not i i i mean i saw a lot of people bagging on their acting they had shit writing to work with and i and i really felt like they were pretty adequate for for and and maybe even better in some i i liked the pfeiffer um character yeah she um, was good but anyway so the, the 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 best part the the worst part to me is the the more i thought about low budget movies that made a shit ton of money and the things that were popping into my head were texas chainsaw massacre blair witch project etc etc these are movies that were game changers they changed Mm -hmm. everything right and this movie just loaded up the found footage thing and did it again yeah which I, i just from the the jump i find depressing Right, I, I get it. You don't have a lot of money. You don't want to think too hard about what the movie you're making, whatever. But it's it's 
the thing that kind of blows my mind is the, you have the chance with so, with no with no budget when you're doing a budget that small you, and you're taking risks you can put something in there that like sort of makes a game changer and there was th literally none of that all it was literally Blair Witch in a school right like and weep yeah yeah that's so. kind of it um okay so if this film were a famous person <laughs> I've already told you mine this person were a famous person from if this film were a famous person from history Yes. It would be. And I'm going to botch his last name. <laughs> okay. Martin Shrelecki? Uh, Shkreli. Shkreli. Farmer Bro. Farmer Bro. Yes. This film is the Farmer Bro of horror films. Because... <laughs> Horror is is a, is, a, wow. is a horror is a is a is a genre that uh, a lot of fans love and a lot of fans need. They need to get their horror fix. And uh, <laughs> I love where you're going. And and and, and Pharma Bro jacked up the price of what was it, like the the pill for like people with AIDS or something like that. It was Daraprim. He put me five thousand percent price increase. It went from like thirty dollars to seven hundred. Like, yeah. So yeah. like the trailer's like, hey, you can get this for like. <laughs> You can get this. You can get this film for like two dollars, and then and then you and then you pay then you pay four dollars on Amazon with the price jack. You're like, oh man, I don't know. Wow, I don't know. This, it was it was a bait and switch. I, it was a bait and switch. They didn't charge people more to see this movie. No, but they they did they did screw with they did screw with people's expectations and <laughs> and that's just not right. So you're saying the true ticket price for this movie should have been like twenty cents. And then you would have been fine, but they inflated the price knowing what they were, they were giving. Yes, yeah. this film. I'm with you. This film should have been like a high school theater play, and they're like, "Listen, normally we sell tickets for like four dollars, but we just got to fill seats, man. We just, just get in there." That was the other thing we were joking about was with their budget. We were like, "You could, you could, you could budget out this film scene to scene." Like, oh shit, they had a, they had to get, they had to get a rope. They had to go to, they had to go. That was that was thirteen dollars at Home Depot. <laughs> the budget $13 they had to build the gallows that's two fifty. <laughs> they're screwed oh, okay wow. so but, but Martin uh, Shkreli. Farmer bro Shkreli yeah, yeah. Farmer bro. that's my famous person uh, so you're saying this movie owns a one of a kind Wu-Tang Clan album that's good um, so, <laughs> so I a person from history I'm gonna have to go with uh, my uncle Henry, because like, like your uncle. Yeah. Like my uncle, actual uncle Henry. I, I, it, it, this movie is just, I mean, I remember when he first figured out he could record people with a camera and then it was like a camera for three weeks filming everything in everyone's face, like blah, blah, blah whatever. Mm -hmm. like, it, it, this feels like his, everyone movie. had an uncle who yeah. had a video camera. Yeah. My this uncle is his Dave. movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a movie. The camera's is rolling for no reason, nowhere. It's edited together into a movie by apparently the investigating police because who else would have edited it? It's nonsensical. <laughs> like, whatever. So this film... This and, film and by the way, Uncle Henry filmed all kinds of inappropriate shit without asking permission. So, like, you know, there's all kinds of shit. Uncle Henry, so. no. <laughs> so this film, yeah. this film yeah. is everyone's uncle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And he was a wholesome guy. It's fine. He's a wholesome it's guy. Totally. You lo everyone loves their uncle. It totally, it totally but please, is. you don't have to film every birthday. <laughs> we get it. It totally okay. makes sense. So yes. the one thing, the one thing that we we discovered when after we watched the film, mm -hmm. uh, we were researching it, looking up things about it, and they yeah yeah well that's how we spend our time. That's Just, how we spend our time because we love you guys and we need to bring you these uh, episodes because. <laughs> Otherwise, researching the gallows. Researching the gallows. It felt like, like one of the gallows. So the one thing we uh, discovered is they they had the intention of trying to create a horror icon. Correct? Like they like they wanted. Yeah, yeah. To, I don't. I don't know if. It, I mean, it's just obvious from the movie that they mm -hmm. they left it open to franchise it, which is smart. I mean, this movie is 2015, even though it feels like it was 2003. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, it, they they were definitely trying to insert a new icon into the horror universe with debatable results. So icon scale, where is where? So this put movie Charlie? put us in the mind of like like on horror movie icons. Where does it rank? So before we rank it, though, let's can, let's just do a quick thing about intentionally making horror icons rather than just letting it organically happen. 
Mm-hmm. Right? I could be totally wrong, but I feel like Freddie and Jason and Michael were were put in there because that's what those directors felt like the movie needed for what they were trying to accomplish. And then they became icons after the fact, or at least that wasn't the driving reason why they were what they were. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, but so there's intentionally create an icon premeditated and, and just it happening. Right. Yeah. So uh, I feel like w- what's the best instance of someone intentionally trying to create an icon and pulling it off intentionally, like intentionally? you know that it was intentional. And my answer is Sam from trick or treat. They knew that was going to be icon making it mm-hmm. right. And that wasn't why they did it, but I'm, I know that they know that that was like going to become like an iconic look and it's perfect. You wouldn't change anything, right? No. And it's amazing. Yeah, and just to the same thing, I would put the the jigsaw little puppet guy. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, because you know right when you see it. Mm-hmm. All right. So now, in terms of icons, is there are there any icons that are worse than Charlie Grimmel? That are worse. Yes. <sighs> Shit. <laughs> Shit. I don't know. <laughs> Like nothing jumps. So is this the worst horror icon of all time? Is that you're saying it's worse than Bye Bye Man? I I feel like giving it the title icon is generous. (laughs) Like you know what I mean? Like stopping it out of the whole premise of the conversation. No, I'm like like okay, so so, okay, we'll give we'll give it. How about Ginger Dead Man? I'll give it an honorary. But even that, like that's cheesy. That's fun. (laughs) If I saw that, like if if you saw if you if I saw a picture (laughs) of it, I would get the premise. Oh. That is right. a gingerbread man who's evil who's probably going to kill people. Like Jack Frost. Same thing. That's a snowman who looks evil. He's going to kill people. Right. You show me Charlie, I'm like, is he a gimp? <laughs> like, what is he? <laughs> well, he's basically, so he's a big haggard guy mm-hmm. with a hangman mask with... Stitches. Which, I'm sorry, detailing. and Stitches, d- d- which sequins. looks like a scarecrow, <laughs> but he's not a scarecrow. So imagine this. It's a scarecrow. Wait, wait, wait. Isn't Nightbreed... Uh, I feel like that's similar. Okay, keep going. Uh, so if I so this is definitely like if we had to be like one, of the if we had to be like one to like Freddie Jason. Yes, Michael. Yes. He he is he is the he is the definition of one. <laughs> yes, he's the definition of one. Okay. Because even a leprechaun, even even like that. the leprechaun, even he's like a leprechaun's like middle of the road. Do I like the leprechaun movies? It's Cronenberg from Night. See, and that looks cooler. That makes sense. Yes. Like, like the design of that looks cool. The the design of the scarecrow and uh, Annabelle creation looked cool. Yes, very. And they this the, they they did that stupid cheese ball ending where uh, we didn't even talk about the ending. Oh my god! I was trying to forget that that happened because the scene that we recommended, the hanging where they take a bow scene, is only the penultimate scene. The ending is yet to come. The ending needs to be cut <laughs> for the film. <laughs> flat out well the ending is where you really get the full look at the gloriousness of the design of because it does that stupid cheesy he flat he flashes at the camera to scare you to end which is never good no. uh icon scale i so do, he's the worst until uh, you can think of something better we're I gonna put him as the worst i mean we were talking like there's 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 uh, you know horror characters like chrome skull who gets right sequels, but you're like but... the the worst because you're, you're right like the ones that you would that would pop into your head for worst quote-unquote worst are cheesy like leprechaun and then you can't you can't blame them for that right no because he's at least a character uh they, they've given him some flavor i know what right. he's about and then like the low rent icons so i actually really sort of like the movie valentine i know mm-hmm. a lot of people hate on that one but i think that's way more effective than this movie for sure and yeah. then, and then the other low rent, considered low rent icon is probably the duo from House of Wax. But I find that kind of creepy and scary way better than this. So yeah, dude. Wait, is House of Wax better than this movie? House of Wax is way better than this movie. Wow, the Paris Hilton, the Paris Hilton one, <laughs> way fucking better than this movie, dude. By a landslide. I never thought I'd be hearing anything. I think is I think Movie Bowl is better with horror characters. <laughs> Who was that shitty villain in House of the Dead? It was like some bald looking. It looked like the guy who had a pair of boobs on his head from Little Nicky. <laughs> you remember that guy? Yeah. It looked like him, but like in control of like zombie hordes and shit. <laughs> he was better than he would be the two. 
to this but guy. But Charlie well. is okay. just he's just the one. I don't get it. All right, so hit us up on our Facebook page uh, at Hello Weekly. Message us uh, worst horror icons. Uh, right now, this is our reigning worst reigning horror champ. Icon. There's got to be one worse. even which like, which by the way, as far as I'm concerned, is not well. We'll let's we'll do the rating. Okay, go. What else we got? Mm. Uh, well, I was just gonna say before we move on from the horror yes. scale, even someone like uh, Torgo from Manos, <laughs> even like 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 even that's better. Yeah. Well. Well, the picture of this. What are you going to dress up for on Halloween? Torgo or Charlie Grimmel? Torgo's better. Torgo. Yeah. For sure. Torgo. Okay. So this actually leads us to the ending. We got to talk about the ending because this next segment is how would these filmmakers have ended? How would they have ended other famous horror movies? (laughs) So the way this film ends is... They do the play. the The guy decides, you know what? I'm just gonna voluntary, uh, voluntarily hang myself, and then then Charlie is going to take a bow with his what we guess is daughter, with his wife in the school. How she got in the school, I don't know. Uh, she's in the school a lot. We see her. We met her she's earlier. Fucking the weird. And then uh, they take a bow, and then randomly, instead of ending the film there, which would have been. If the film had ended there, recommended, it would, yes, the recommended <laughs> ending, ending, right? Mm-hmm. We then decide, for some reason, to go to a found footage. We go from found footage that high schooler kids are doing, like sort of dicking off filming things, to found footage with cops going to a house where the daughter and the mother are watching the play where her father dies because they're so hung up on it. For whatever fucking reason. No, because we're in found footage inception again. So oh my god, they they did that twice. They fucking did it. They again. did it twice. Yep. And uh the two cops are in there. They're the mom is brushing the daughter's hair. They both sort of look at the cop, and the one guy goes, Dude, will you back up? We back up. Guy goes flying, he dies, the other cop dies, and then we get that beautiful close up of, of of Charlie in his in his BDSM mask. Dumbest fucking ending ever like literally the momentum they had from from the decent scares that were happening and the second to last scene they squander completely and this oh, i mean it's so stupid you have these cops who are like literally standing there while people are doing scary things not arming themselves not it's like literally just doing nothing but waiting to die and then they die like the cheesiest possible way but but before that these two characters brushing their hair and just like creepy staring oh my god i could not stop laughing because they were watching the tv and then the camera that we're watching through which apparently is what the cop cam Mm -hmm. it turns to the tv to look at what they're watching and when it turns back, they're facing us instead of the TV. And it's a jump scare, except for it's dumb. Yeah. It's... <laughs> right? Like, I can't even, it's agonizing. It just makes, it just, it just, that, I mean, that, that's why Charlie's at a, at a one. Because there's, I don't, I don't understand the reason why they're, they, they have such a boner to kill. Well, them. Charlie was never going to be anything but a one. Pfeiffer is fucking scarier than but Pfeiffer is but fucking scarier <laughs> than Charlie. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the, the, the thing is that the movie actually had a chance of like whatever. And then by that ending, it was like, no, the whole, I mean, I mean, there was no, there was no, his name was Jason. Right. Today's his birthday. There was no, his name's Fred Krueger. There's no, there's no, my, you know, th- there's nothing that they give us to understand this villain. Mm, well, yeah, no, I mean, he right. He has they a, give us that weak sauce. He wasn't supposed to be the guy. Well, who yeah, got he hung. has a revenge plot against someone who called in sick. Like that's not his fault. <laughs> like, yeah. is it confirmed that? He but the dad, the right? dad is still alive. So the reason he got cheese dicked into death <laughs> is still alive. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, whatever. And now the cops. And now here's the here's the way I see it. If I if, if I was the father of one of the cops who got killed, I would then be a weirdo and watch that cop camp for the rest of my life until my dad sort of haunted their house <laughs> and then he kills those people and now. We all just now we all just have loved ones who are avenging us as ghosts. How do you like them apples? Gallows too. The gallows too. It should be, it should be gallows too. The cop kills Charlie's family because they suck. Yes. Well, they totally dropped the ball on this ending. So the question is, how would these people? If these filmmakers had made other horror movies, how would they have ended those horror movies? Got any ideas of how they would have? So the way they would ruin all momentum of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. 
you got our final girl. She she jumps out of the house. She's running down that stretch. Leatherface is behind her. If like an eagle just picked up Leatherface and, <laughs> and flew off into the wind. That's how they would fucking end it. It would make no sense. You're like, why can it be? But a e- scary eagle. But a scary eagle who, who stares at the lens the whole time. <laughs> it had to be something so ridiculous and fucking dumb. <laughs> where yeah. you're like why did they why didn't they just why didn't they end it a different way if they ended night of the living dead it would end with like i don't know uh, night of, they would end the night of the living dead as like a lowe's commercial for home improvement <laughs> like like they, it would just be left fucking field dumb shit that makes uh, no sense i would have liked that, that would've, that would've good. <laughs> wow so i was i was trying to imagine how these um filmmakers would have finished the the film the witch right because yeah. clearly black philip would have been a dog in a goat outfit <laughs> <laughs> Ob- obviously Ob- right? and then at the end of the witch when she like levitates up in the air mm-hmm. right? i think that's so we so here's the thing that like the gallows already had the woods thou right so you mm-hmm. got the woods thou live life deliciously except for they would have not have written that like no. They, like the devil would have come up behind her in their version. It would have been like, "Would thou like to meet Charlie Grimmel?" So, so that would have lessened the impact. And that. then he would have described uh, th- via dialogue, uh, "Charlie Grimmel is the guy who died because we explain everything to the audience <laughs> because we can't leave anything up to their imagination or let them figure out themselves because the audience are fucking stupid." <laughs> Right. Okay. Continue. Right. No. Yeah. Totally. No. Absolutely. And then you know when she when she levitates in the in the air at the end, like with the evil like thing, whatever. I think it's pretty clear that it would have shown us you know a big hand holding her. Or <laughs> something. I mean, right? Because they, you wouldn't have had the money to hide it. They would have had to use something like wires or whatever. They probably just hung her. I mean, knowing them, she would like a noose would have come out. She'd have been like a. And they, it, would, it would have been, what's that like to live life deliciously? And then they would have hung her. Yeah. So the answer would have been no. They try, I mean, they try to sort of do like what felt like uh, like a Nightmare on Elm Street where Nancy gets in the car through the door. Away and through the door. Yeah. But the, the only reason that works is because we know who Nancy's, we know what well, we and, see. And care. Yeah. We care about Nancy we, we care, and we know who the mother is. So right. we're already familiar. And But but they're just killing like two random people who we met literally 30 seconds ago. <laughs> it just makes no sense. No, no, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And that's, you know, the, and keep in mind that the, you know, the evil plot here required them. So their, their plan was to lure Reese into a reenactment of the play in the hopes that just out of, you know, devotion to his art he would decide to really hang himself yeah <laughs> during the performance because they don't force him to do that right mm-hmm. like he could have just jetted but but he's in love with pfeiffer so he's hanging with her or like whatever and then he decides to actually kill himself for the girl that he has never gone out on a date with mm-hmm. <laughs> after he's been outside he tasted freedom Right, right, right. Yeah, but no, but you got it. Well, I mean, I and I, I, you know, that's laudable. He comes in to yeah, to, save, to save Pfeiffer, which is fine. She deserves it, but he thinks. But that, what I'm saying is, their plot in advance had to be like, well, oh God, what if the, what if the, the, they find one of the 200 numerous doors in the school and escape? No, no, don't worry, they're not going to escape. They're, don't worry, even if they want to escape, they're going to come back. And then voluntarily stick their heads in the nooses. <laughs> Don't worry, this plan is gold. Wow. So there's no way that was going to work. Yeah, that, that screw this movie. Yeah, that ending was 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 very wackadoodle. But goddamn, if they didn't sell me on the trailer. Yeah, shall we rate it? Yeah, I'm I'm ready. To, I'm ready. If they if I think at sixteen percent, I wouldn't move it up or down. Are we talking about wh- wh- where it lives? Or uh, where where oh where it's it lives neighborhood? so it's neighborhood oh Jesus let on me, Rotten Tomatoes let me see here let's see Rotten Tomatoes sixteen percent we have the haunting okay we have ninety eight Godzilla I love that movie mm-hmm. I know it's not good it's but I certainly better than Gallows it's certainly okay. better haunting the haunting's better uh, Idle Hands better way by better far, way better uh, Texas Chainsaw uh, the Next Generation uh probably equally bad okay <laughs> probably equally bad uh friday the 13th uh part five the new beginning better okay uh 
Underworld Evolution. Better. Better. Okay. Uh, the Haunting in Connecticut. Better. Okay. Now, this is where it gets a little bad. <laughs> the Dark Tower. Oh, yeah. See, I I think Dark Tower is a better made movie, but I feel like if, if a year from now the two of them come on and I, I just idly find myself rewatching one, it'd probably be The Gallows. Yeah. Oh, it, it's interesting. <laughs> uh, didn't see this one, but Wish Upon. Wish Upon sucks. I think this is better than Wish Upon. Okay. You think it's better than Wish Upon? Uh, then The Last Exorcism Part 2. Didn't see that. Didn't see that one. Uh, and then Tom Cruise's The Mummy. Uh, the Gallows is better than The Mummy. <laughs> I can I can vouch for that. And that, okay. is, that is just a testament to Universal. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and given that you're letting me cheat on the test with that information, I'm going to go ahead and rate this movie... 17%. <laughs> I would say, I say, I say, yeah, I say I'm leaving it at 16%. Okay. I think if they, if they, if you were able to edit out them telling you what's happening on screen mm-hmm. and cut off the ending, mm-hmm. then I'd say the film's probably 30%. Like, I think it would jump, I think it would jump that much just with that because it would take a lot of the cheesiness and, and sure. just, just, just bad writing out. Sure. But it's still overall just kind of a so so piece of crap yeah and i think it's as a lesson to filmmakers i think that you know it's um it's a testament to what you should actually be paying attention to when you're making the movie like they were paying attention to we got to put something on this guy's head we have a villain how should we dress him Mm -hmm. how should we change it what should we do like whatever that's thinking about what you're, what you're, the task in front of you. It's not thinking about the audience. I feel like they had a really scary premise. Yeah. They had a decent cast and they had a, a, a really good location. Mm-hmm. And best case scenario, you're coming out of this. If you don't add anything groundbreaking and like whatever, best case scenario, you, add, you come out ironically with something event horizon ish, right? Yeah. Where there's some really, really scary, really memorable scenes. As long as you focus on ma- making the scary things actually scary, but they focus too much on the, you know, we, we need this here and then we need to explain this plot point. And no one's going to pay attention to your fucking plot anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Just have some outstanding batshit crazy scenes. The, the hanging scene in The Omen is worth all of this movie. Yeah. Like that 30 seconds of that is worth all of this movie because that's truly terrifying. This should be not more terrifying than the old woman, but the scenario should be more terrifying, mm-hmm. right? Like like if you're trapped in a school with a with a supernaturally at least supernaturally swelled mm-hmm. physically swelled killer, that should be a terrifying scenario, but I feel like if I was at a birthday party and I watched some random like servant hang themselves, it would be scarier to me than this movie. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you can't even you didn't even beat that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a it, it, but but uh, you know props to them for for making a hundred thousand dollar film that made a yeah shit ton of no money shit. In, the, in the box. Office. All right, so because this is our Halloween that we see, go series is rounding the corner to ending because yeah. we're we're in the fifteen percent range heading to zero. Uh, this is the worst movie we've watched for the series, right? Comfortably, this is comfortably the most. Your Pain. number two is Texas Chainsaw 2. Two. That was a while ago. Right. But even that film has charming qualities about Compared it. Compared to that, you think that's you think this is worse than Texas. Oh, by by a landslide. Okay. By a landslide. So this is the worst movie we've seen yeah. in the And you agree? So you think far. it's you think it's Yeah, so but the reason I'm asking you is I wanna you know we're as we're picking on the way down, uh do you think this is going to end as the worst movie we'll see in the whole series? Or is there worse to come? It depends because this film was made by people who I don't think truly embrace the genre. Right. And it's possible the director of Dracula 2 is actually a horror person. It's actually a horror person. It right. might put a little bit more love into it. That'll show on film. I think I think it's I think from sixteen down, it's gonna be a director to director and in, in, in writer, director, writer, uh, uh basis on whether or not it's gonna be as bad as the gallows. But that is yes. a, if 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 the rest of the films are are, are equal to the gallows, God help us. <laughs> but so I don't think here's what be. I think. What I think is we. So I watched a lot of boxing growing up, mm-hmm. right? And I feel like I don't know whether we're gonna see a worse movie than this. I know 
that we're going to be watching like Dracula 2 and the Disappointments Room. <laughs> like there's some movies yeah, yeah, coming yeah. out. I think we're watching The Unborn, which I, I already know is better than this piece of shit. But yeah. um, in boxing, you know there's that one point where someone gets knocked that knocked down and they get back up and they give them that count. Yeah. And then they let them back in and you're looking at them and they're really wobbly and you're like, oh my God, they get one more hit and it's over. Right? Yeah. So that's where we are right now. I don't care how bad the movies coming up are. If they have one crazy charming scene in them, they're gonna knock this movie out. I agree. All they need is one. All they need is like a thirty second, like anything that's ex- exceptional, even exceptionally bad or stupid or glorious, like whatever. If it's got it, it's in got it, heart. Yeah, like a like a fighter. <laughs> that's all it's gonna need to knock this movie out, right? It could be the whole rest of the movie could be worse, right? Mm-hmm. But if it's got like one deadly friend basketball kill. Then it's going to knock this movie flat. So the question is whether any of those have that one punch in them. So I'm excited to find out because we're about to watch some hot garbage. (laughs) It'll be fun. It will be fun. It'll be fun. All right. And if you love this episode, which we know you do. Or if you hate the gallows. Or if you you hate the gallows, which we know you do. (laughs) uh, Head on over to our Patreon page. Patreon.com slash Hollow Weekly. Where we have our last fan standing game going on. We are at No Mercy Hospital. We are... At the home stretch, I do believe. I think we got three or four more scenarios in there in which some people will die, and there's been deaths this time. Thank God, <laughs> I'm I'm now employed to make the video obituary That's when it's right. all done. So thank you, thank you for participating, and thank you for for uh, having fate not be on your side. <laughs> so head on over to Patreon. And congratulations to the survivors. Uh, well, who's remaining? Yes, because there might not be anyone by the end. That's right. my goal. <laughs> Because I want to put who's dead and how they died <laughs> in it. So, like, someone being, like, on the operation table, yeah. blah, 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 that kind of thing. So, head on to It's patreon.com slash Weekly. And until next time, watch a bunch of horror movies and stay scary. Stay out of school. Uh, yes. I guess.